probably like since the move and I mean like it's tough to be in a box for that long I can I can't imagine I noticed a little stiffness in his walk and I, I noticed some some nails or like nails from his paws are a little bit like shorter than the others and I also noticed that his tail is not going straight back it has a little tilt to the right mm -hmm. and uh, just like some overall stiffness and like touching and um, yeah just like some I feel like you could move a little smoother, kind of like that kind of observation I just had. Okay, now we can adjust this, but I want to start with stretching. Yeah. Right. Now we're going to leave that for a minute yeah. okay. because I have to set the hip before the tail yeah. will come around. Oh, <laughs> you, want to, you just want to help. Okay, I want to help you. I just made a new online course called How to Massage Your Own Dog. Oh, I am so excited today. We have Kim, we have Stetson. Stetson's a Rhodesian Ridgeback, is that correct? Yes, it is. And how old is Stetson? He is one and a half now. Yeah. And Tell us where you're from and why you're in New York now. Like, what's going on? What's, what's different in your life? <laughs> um, I'm from Munich. I just moved here to New York and mm -hmm. I'm here the next three years and I'm a software engineer for IBM. So I'm really excited and I was able to bring him over and he's living the big city life now and mm -hmm. is happy, I guess. <laughs> was it tough to bring him over? Like, did he have to have to do a quarantine type of thing or paperwork? So how how thing, do you do yeah. that? So it's good. It's a funny process. Let's go that okay. way. Um, so he had all the papers. You, you have to make sure like he has all the vaccination, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have to find a box that fits its size. And obviously you have to choose the biggest one. He's a big guy. How many kilos? He's, uh, kilos is like almost 45. It's like 100 pounds. I looked, okay. translated that before. 45 in. kilos. Yeah. And you're also a horse person. I am. So tell me a little bit of when you were living or growing up. Yeah. You grew up with horses. I think I could walk before I could. Uh, I could ride before I could walk. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with being around horses and all that kind of stuff. So I was a big horse riding girl. Um, and you competed. I was a professional horse jumper, like horse mm -hmm. show jumper. I guess. It's was that the Grand Prix level or like um, what do you call that? What did you do? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't go that high, but mm -hmm. I was internationally quite successful, and I was. The, I won one state championship, so that was quite the biggest thing. Very and nice. Then, and then I decided I. Um, I had a tough decision with my dad. He sat me down and said, "Okay, Kim, you can either become a professional horseback rider or you study." <laughs> and I chose to study. Okay, so, there you go. And then yeah. um, my. Dear, dear, special friend, Nick, is from Munich, and let's wave to her. Hi, Nick. Say something to her in German. Yeah, uh, ich freue mich, dich kennenzulernen und ich brauche deine Kontaktdaten, weil ich habe ein paar Pferde in München, die du behandeln kannst. And so, Nick, I might want to put you guys together, too, if I have permission, so you let me know. Um, you know, so you could have each other's WhatsApp or something. Um, but I bet you guys know common people in the horse industry. I assume, 100%. Yeah and you would be able to connect that way um, and just have that in common. So, um, but let's talk about Stetson. So Stetson, Stetson's only a year old approximately, yeah. right? And um, he's such a lovely boy. And I got to say hello to him before we started this video. But what are some of the things you noticed and, and why did you um, make an appointment here today? Um, so lately, I mean like probably like since the move and I mean like it's tough to be in a box for that long I can I can't imagine I noticed a little stiffness in his walk I, I noticed some some nails or like nails from his paws are a little bit like shorter than the others And I also noticed that his tail is not going straight back. It has a little tilt to the right mm -hmm. and uh, just like some overall stiffness and like touching and um, Yeah, just like some I feel like you could move a little smoother, kind of like that kind of observation I just had. Okay, so we might get him up and walk and watch him walk yeah. a little bit in a second. Uh, let's talk about the nails, because the nails, and, and she's a horse person and an animal person, um, and she says something really interesting to me. So first of all, she's very mindful of, this dog is in beautiful shape. This dog is so well cared for, and she knows a lot about nails because she knows about hoofs on a horse. 
and a hoof can tell us what's happening above the horse. And also you can look above the horse, like the hips, and, and almost predict what the hoofs will look like. Because they reflect yeah. each other, right? So true. And um, I, studied, uh, I studied with this hoof guy for a while. To, after my schooling with um, animal chiropractic, I, I found these guys that I really wanted to study with. And one is a barefoot farrier, and the other was a great horse equine massage therapist. But they worked a lot with the hoof on up, and they sometimes worked together on the same horses. So the horse might have a problem with um, having the one hoof like grow wide and flat, and this one is tall like a can, like this, like shaped like a like a can, and then this one is flat like a frying pan, and you could see. Especially when I was studying with these guys, they'd say, now we're going to find a muscle knot right up here. Or you reach under the tail and the, the spasm would be yeah. right where you think it would be. Or where they would teach you would be. Then the farrier guy would do some trimming. And the muscle guy would work on the muscles. <laughs> yeah. And soon we'd start to see the hip change. The relaxing, yeah. yeah. And then we'd see the tail move differently. Oh. Yeah. So these guys were both retired, but I got to study with them for a while. And they were just beautiful to learn from. But one of the things she was saying was not the length of the nails, which she's done a great job on, but they're wearing differently. So one is wearing out faster than the other. Is that correct? Yes. Is that what is. you meant? Yeah. So that tells us a lot about something. We don't know yet, but you, you already kind of know. But I mean, I haven't worked on your yeah. dog yet. But we also see this in humans. Think about it. So if your shoes are wearing unevenly, then that tells us something's off with the gait of the person. 100%. And um, so we can look at someone's wear and tear. Isn't or sometimes people get a chronic callus on their foot. Hopefully my socks are in good shape. <laughs> but they'll get like, oh, I get this callus here for no reason. But there is a reason. And it's something about the way they're walking. They could have a misaligned ankle, knee, hip, lower back that makes them develop a certain callus or a tough mm. spot on their foot yeah. and or something that wears faster or rubs more or drags more or grinds down into the mm. earth more. And it's because of dysfunction and misalignment and it's worth looking at. So we're going to do some cool stuff today. But I'm sorry to wake up the sleeping boy. <laughs> this is nap time for you. <laughs> so let's get him up and let's walk him up and down Come. the hallway a couple of times. And let's just see what his tail wants to tell us. Oh, I ripped my pants <laughs> earlier. Is it really bad? I noticed it, like, I think when you got the trash can after. Oh, you geez. can, like, make a note about it or something okay. like that. Just, yeah, I was, I was teaching someone stretching before, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I ripped my pants about an hour ago. Nice. Actually, it was with the last one that I just left. So, I ripped my pants. Okay. Is it, how bad is it? Oh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Here, look. Oh, yeah, shit, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> but you can only see if you look from behind. From front, you can't see. No, everybody that watches my channel knows that I'm a mess. Okay, you know, like, I, I don't... Okay. Try to be perfect. Okay, you guys walk. We're back in business. Look, it, it definitely goes middle right, middle right, yeah. middle right. Here, let, here, watch me. Here's my grip in my pants, but it goes. Yeah. Right? It goes middle right, middle right. Come back this way, Kim. Look at my arm. Middle right. Yeah, middle exactly. Right, middle right. And I also don't like how high it's set. Yeah. It's set a little high. And we see that with horses sometimes. Mm -hmm. When we were talking about, sometimes it looks really pretty, like a dressage horse, we love seeing that. Mm -hmm. But it's not always healthy. Sometimes it's healthy. Mm -hmm. and sometimes, so long as it's relaxed, right? Yeah. But if it's focused But if it's, yeah. if it's uh, you know, if it's from stress, it's yeah. not good. Hi, handsome. You look like a Stetson hat. <laughs> okay, you ready? Let's walk one more time. And you never saw that before, right? No. So stop him for a second. We can stop him right here. I just want to feel the glutes and the hamstrings. Can I touch your back and look at you for a minute, Stetson? Is it okay if I work on you? No. Okay. I like to ask because they'll tell me. It's so okay. I just want to feel the muscularity. So here's the hamstrings. And I'm on the right side. 
so this is nice. So he has good muscular tone. I was looking for atrophy or mm -hmm. wasting, but he doesn't have any of that. The pelvis is off. This side is sunk a little bit, this side's high. We call that a pi ilium on the right, where it goes posterior, and then the bottom part mm -hmm. shifts down. So these are called the tuber sacralis. Yeah. And that's Latin. Put your thumb here. Like. And there are these bumpy spots right here. Yeah. And they should be there. Yeah. But come down and touch them this way. Oh, this yeah. one's higher, do you see? Yes, I do. So we start again. We come like. down like this. And this one's a little higher yeah. than the other one. Just play color. So do it yourself, because you're really good, so I'm going to use you. Oh, my knee hurts sitting this way. Yeah, do, holy, that's a, that's a centimeter. Okay. Yeah. So if I drew a line here, yeah. you see this one's yeah. closer to the head. Yeah. We call that cranial. Yeah. This is caudal towards the tail. And I'm sw sweeping down in here. You guys can watch this from the top of the video. So I'm going to exaggerate, but this one is here and this yeah. one's here. But here, let's do it for real. It's just yeah. a little off, like a centimeter. Yeah. Okay, but... Here's a big muscle knot, feel this one. And so you're gonna just be mm -hmm. into this, right in there. It's around the hip. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right in there. Yeah, I feel it. Okay. And then there's a reason that tail is doing that. I might have you hold around his head. <laughs> so what I do with this is the same as a horse, where I let him pull. Yeah. I'm not gonna pull. I'm gonna first get a nice grip and then let him pull away a little bit. Not yet, babe, just a little more. So re-get re re yourself balanced. Now we can adjust this, but I want to start with stretching. Yeah. Right. Now we're going to leave that for a minute. Yeah. Because I have to set the hip before the tail yeah. will come around. Oh, <laughs> no, so you don't want to, you just want to help. Okay, I want to help you. <laughs> you know, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I purposely don't pull away. Um, to me, that's not gross anyway. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Like, I like it. I love dogs. Uh, but I also want him to connect to me, and we're, we're working together. He knows I was on, on something, mm -hmm. and I wanted him to, to either say, yes, let's keep going, or would you never touch me again? Yeah. So I, I can't recoil when he comes up to me, right? Yeah. If he comes up to me and you're like, eh, then we're not, we, we broke the communication yeah. already, okay? So let's go back to our spot. I know where I need to work. And we got to do some work, okay? I was just curious with starting with the tail, but, but obviously I can't start with the tail. I have to start, I'm going to actually start at his head and work down now. Um, I might have you sit here. So you sit on that side, yeah. No, no yeah, maybe yeah. I'll use it. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to stand for a little while. And first, I want to check this atlas. Mm -hmm. So in the horse, we call this the pole. Mm -hmm. What do you call it in German? Atlas. Oh, so the atlas. atlas. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's bring the head up. Hi, baby. You have such pretty eyes. Let's bring the head down. Good. Let's bring the head this way. I'm surprised how well he works with that. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. <laughs> Step up a little bit with mom. Coming down the neck. So here's something in here. It says glide your hand down alongside the scapula. And it's yeah, now replace your finger with mine. Uh, yeah. right there is a knot. Oh yeah. And horses get that too. She's mm -hmm. a jumping force. So sometimes we're ever on a horse and it doesn't want to pull to the right or pull left. Not that you pull, you yeah. bend, yeah. right? But like they're just resisting the right. Mm -hmm. um, also it could be from jumping too, because dogs love to jump around. 
But so I'm going to adjust this lower cervical. And this is at the base of the neck. So this is C7, T1. Dogs have seven bones in the neck, 13 bones here, and seven here. So I'm going to first adjust this area. Thanks, babe. That's it. And I'm going to hit this once with this thing, too. That's it. Okay, that's the last one I got. So now, Kim, you feel now. Let's bring it around this way one more time. Okay. So it's deep in here. You, you come around the edge of the bone, and it's there. It should be smoother now. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. So I got that to yeah. move. So that's nice. That'll help him just feel more comfortable, more relaxed. I just want to see the atlas one more time, because I think he has a right superior atlas. So I'm going to... Got that. Okay, is that okay, <laughs> babe? You might want to shake after that. So let's just let him walk around for a second. Come. Yeah. <laughs> and we can bring him back. It's okay. He just wants to think about it. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Now we're going to come down the back because Kim has found like a lot of tender spots here. So in the dog, we call this the withers also. Mm -hmm. It's T3 through T8. So here's the seven bones of the neck. Here's the first thoracic, where the ribs begin. They go under the scapula. The scapulas are on the side. Mm -hmm. And um, I just made this video course called How to Massage Your Dog. And chapter three, I have um, a skeletal anatomy section. Mm -hmm. But chapter four, I have a muscle anatomy section. You can really see how the scapula and the muscles come down and through. Mm -hmm. Um, so here's the beginning of the withers area. Now on a horse, this is where the saddle would go yeah. here. But still, this is a very significant area because from a musculoskeletal point of view, this is where the shoulder blades are. This is where the forward generation of the, of the front limbs generate power. We know that in yeah. horses or all quadrupeds, it's propelled from the back end first, but the front end takes a lot of wear and tear. It doesn't it say like 60% yeah. of the weight of a dog is in the front? Yeah, side? so it, because it, this can launch propel, propulsion forward, but the front gets a lot of, yeah. and it gets a lot of whipping of the neck. So this area is very vulnerable, and I'm just going to come through and see what I find. Right here is a tight spot. So here you could feel that yourself, right there. And, oh, and, and that's a tight spot. So that spot I need to adjust. So can I get this one for you? <laughs> Okay, it's just gonna be quick, okay? So I have to support here, you hold his head, and I'm gonna have to support under here. Oh, Got no. it. Okay. I'm sorry, babe. I heard that. Oh, are you okay? Uh, you okay? Hopefully that's the worst one we have to do. Yeah. Today. You got all you thought out. Go away. <laughs> okay? He was just surprised. And I'll let him come back to me, meaning yeah. I'm not gonna. You good? <laughs> okay, we're good. All right, so um, you're good. I had to get that spot. That spot was totally locked and not moving. Um, I know I scared him. No, you I'm, speak to him in German also? Yeah, he's bilingual. No, <laughs> he's full German. Okay, so bring him around again. <laughs> yeah, come sit. The way he was before. Okay. Four, so this already feels better. Oh, um, light. No, light. Okay. So this is good. Coming down here. I might change it up in this section. Yeah. Uh, there it is here, too. Feel this one. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Thing. So this one I'll change techniques, okay? So I don't freak you out so much. Look, it's... Okay, mommy hold him. So I'm gonna start above it and then come into it, okay? Live, Stetson, live. And it feels like this. Yeah, yeah. So the bad spot's a little lower. It's right here. Yeah, that's where I got the tension, you know, when I go over that side. But this is one of the biggest wear and tear areas for any quadruped because it's where okay. the thoracics meet the lumbars. It. So it's the Light. junction of thoracic lumbar. Okay. 
I think he had a fall. He might have fallen on this hip. Because oh. this is, looks like an injury from a fall. Can you hand me that activator, which is the other instrument, Kim? So this is called a PI ilium. Here's the hip. This whole side is all, this is so tight. This whole, this whole area here, this part of the glute. I'm gonna just rub this for you, okay? He's a little scared of me now, because now I'm touching very painful spots. Yeah, it's okay. Okay? It's okay. Good luck. It's okay. It's okay. So he has a synchral That's apex that. right on the tail. That's so it means the tail deviated to the right. So I'm going to take it and do a little bit of a push. So I take it the opposite way. Mm -hmm. Oh, good okay, boy. Okay. Yes. Good job. And now we're going to follow it up with a little instrument adjusting. I'm going to go to the sacral tuberous ligament, and that's when you find sometimes. I think when you said you go under the tail. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Let's let's see him walk now again. Okay. That's I have a rip in my pants, everybody. So sorry. Yeah. But what can I say? Here, I'll walk him. You walk behind him. Okay. Because oh. I want you to see his tail. Yeah. So much better already. Like it's still tilted right. But it's coming a little yeah. to the left now. Yeah. He's yeah. trying to find both sides yeah. now. So it was doing right only, but look, it wants to come this way now. Yeah. I can do more. You walk now so I can see again. Nice and slow. It, um, every third time it flicks. Yeah. So it's, it's not there yet. We got more work to do. <laughs> All right, let's do a little more. I think he'll let me, right? Yeah. So what I saw this time, if I'm going to be honest, which is, it was doing, it was doing right center, right center, right center, right center. Now it goes like this. Yeah. I'm going to be the tail for your right. So right center, right center, boom. Mm -hmm. Right center, right center. So about every third, it does a little to the left. Yeah. But that's not enough yet. We've got to do more. Come, let's go. Get the work steps. Come. So I got to do more on the hip. So the reason the tail, the tail is only giving us a window into what's happening. It's not mm -hmm. the, it's not the problem. The problem is the hip. Yeah. Uh, the tail is the uh, symptom or the, the expression of functional change. So he's not functioning correctly in the pelvis or the rear end. Yeah. So the tail can't be happy. Yeah. That makes sense to you because it's horse language. Absolutely. And I know you know dogs too, but you said <laughs> horses was your Horse, first, yeah. your first love. Yeah. And um, all right, so can we just do a little bit more? A little bit. Okay. So Please. walk yeah. around again, and come in front of us. That's <laughs> He's a little nervous because you know I, I am working on tough areas. <laughs> That's a nine. And you can hold him and control him if you want. I will. So that's fine, that's enough. Okay, I'm live. 
And he can sit if he wants. Okay. This could take more than one treatment. You know, and yeah. um, what I tell humans and animal owners is this work is usually a process, not a one day procedure. Um, plus, the reason I wanted to show you some of these spots is so you'll know where to work. Yeah. So, right now, put your fingers on this side. I, I would hold both sides if you can. This is the. Yeah, and that's oh, yeah, a good place it. to rub. Yeah. I can literally feel that muscle part. So when these muscle knots are like that, the mm -hmm. tail can't be happy. Yeah. And it's worse on the right. Mm -hmm. So right here, it's pretty rough. But I'm going to rub it for a little bit because I also do massage. And let's just see if he lets me massage him for a little bit. You got to remember to breathe. Let's see. People, uh, especially on my horse videos, they make fun of me because I say breathe. Yeah. And they go, is he asking the horse to breathe <laughs> or is he asking, telling himself to breathe? And the answer is both. Yeah. First of all, I'm telling myself to breathe. But I also want, I don't know, I talk to horses and I talk to dogs because that's who, what I like to do. So some people understand I talk to my animals too. Yeah. And some people would never talk to their animals. But I like to talk. So I might say, let's all take a breath. Stats in. Okay, let's just take a breath. Let's just take a breath. So I'll just relax. So I'm on that nasty spot. And give me your shoulder. Mine? Yeah, any shoulder you want. Right here. So I'm kind of like that much pressure. Okay. And you so can it feel it. Lot, yeah, it's but a lot. It's, but it's like. But it's not it's horrible not. either. I think it's just like the discomfort he's yeah. experiencing right now. And you yeah. even have a spot there. Have you know. notice that? Yeah. So do you guys live in this area? You're up in. Uh, in Westchester, yeah, like West Point area. Yeah. No, Westchester. That's why. Oh, Plains, Westchester, yeah. yeah. Do you have to come into Manhattan for your work sometimes? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah like go like two to three times a week. Like. Hmm. Well, the good news is I found the bad spot. Yeah, and and it's he's right allowing you actually to like. But dogs can tell when I'm not breathing or when I am breathing. Same with horses. And horses yeah. definitely can. Yeah. Especially, I guess, when I get taught like quite early, because like when it's when you young and you try to learn like right, you like sometimes hold your breath when you go to a jump, and my horse always said like, no, keep breathing. Oh, that's it. Sorry. Let's have a walk again. Getting a left swing. That's way better. Did you see it again? Hundred percent. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's it's not a hundred percent better, but we're getting a left swing. Yeah. Not as much that time, but there's a left. There's yeah. another one. That's awesome. It goes like way further. I just want to do one little bit more if you guys can watch a little longer. I'm sure a lot of people won't watch this when you find it boring, but I'm here to work, and I just I want to adjust that spot with okay. this. Okay. There's this ligament that comes across here that I want to just push into. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna come under it a little bit. So it's not live. <laughs> Both, both of you guys have the letter K as your name. Let's be treated with a C or a K. With a K too. Yeah. Uh, lie uh, face down. Put your nose in here. Oh, God. So 
So you're tight in here, do you feel this? So I had my, when I played lacrosse and I was at a world championship, I had my lap room ruptured by I added drone. Oh wow. So since then, and they told me I have to get surgery, but I should avoid it as long as I can. Oof. And then I obviously sit on a desk every day. You need a little work too. <laughs> like feel this, this is crazy. It's just like tight. All right, and this is a mini one, okay? Okay. Because I have another patient waiting. Big breath in. Would have just popped breathing, right? <laughs> just breathing, it was cracking. And blow it out. There you go. You feel those? Yeah. Big breath in and blow it out. Wow, did you hear those? <laughs> Big breath in and blow it out. I'm going to stretch you this way, okay? Okay. That's fine. Now I'm going to come in this way. Ooh. That one's been stuck for a while. <laughs> that was a tough one. <laughs> yeah, that one's been like that for probably a couple of months. Oh, God. Those Jesus. are good for you. Now lie on your side facing me this way, please. That wasn't too strong, though, no. was it? No, that was fantastic. <laughs> Big breath in, blow it out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I have more issues than you, dog. Lie on your back. <laughs> That's like, he's so confused. He's doing better pops than you. <laughs> Here, turn this way, please. Okay. That must have felt nice though, right? That was a little big relief. So let me hold your wrist. Okay. Thank you. Let the hip fall. Off the table. That was it, we got it though. <laughs> so now, um, the table wow. crashed at the <laughs> same time. So come stand up. And let me look at your wrist too, okay? Lie on your back one more time because I think we missed the ankles. Oh my god. Your ankles are a little tight. Ah. Do you hear a crack? And that Ooh, was my hip. hip too. That was your right <laughs> hip. Good. So come sit up and swing your legs this way. I think you're done. Oh, you feel amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I have one. So let me tell you what we did today, okay? Because we're done now. All right, I adjusted your atlas. I adjusted your lower cervical right here, kind of where your neck meets your shoulder blade. I came down, I had that nasty spot that you didn't like so much that was at T4. Then we found one with your mom all the way down at the thoracolumbar junction, which is between T13 and L1. Then we did a lot of work around your tail and pelvis. Okay, we kept rechecking. Your mom has to keep massaging that area for me, okay? So make sure she does that on a daily basis for even a couple of minutes, it would be fantastic. Okay? Oh. And if you can, come back soon and we'll do a follow-up. Yeah. Okay? Anything you wanna say? <laughs> oh, leave a comment. Okay, so we're gonna, people can leave comments for you and encourage you to do well, all right? You're almost like a small horse, that's why she got you. She needed to get at least a dog big enough to look like a small horse. Thank you very much, Thank Ken. you so much All for right. your help. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.